Hi guys and girls, Emma again. Welcome back to the next video in this pump build. Part 32 in this engine build. That's crazy. Um, but anyway. This is what we ended up with last time. And I was sort of over it. But what happened was that I cut the end short. Because basically... I had a power cut while I was uploading some files and they got corrupted and I couldn't save them so I was missing some files but last thing we did was cut this cavity here um, so that it doesn't clean up here and it cleans up here and it's a bit deeper all the way around so that's just somewhere for the water to go while it's Basically, so the water goes up the pipe and not round and round and round and round. So, we've done that. And this is what we've ended up with. Now, there's a couple of jobs we can do. Right, there's heaps to do, actually. But, first job with this, really, I think, is to set this up in a lathe. Put a chamfer on it. Or to put a, put a shoulder on it so that it fits there. Um, put ten holes around it. And then chop this in the middle and clean both pieces up and put 10 holes around there to match so that's actually bolted on there. Then from there we can start to look at making some of the other bits. So let's put this in the lathe, clean him up and make him fit this, this space here. The first thing I'm going to do is mark this across here and this piece here it says it's seven eight which is scaling that is six hundred and fifty thousand something like that this last piece here six hundred and six hundred and sixty thou so we need to mark that Across there at 660, a bit more, 700 there. Uh, seven fifty there, maybe because this one here isn't as long. Let's mark that at seven fifty all the way around. We'll cut him off carefully with a hacksaw and clean the two bits up. I think we might do that first. So I've cut these, this one and this one, pretty cool, I'm going to sit these in here and face them off, put this one in the reverse jaws 
nicely face this one off to length um, and then it's time to go over the milling machine and put some screw holes in So that's that one down to size. That looks pretty good. Now, there's an undercut in here, um, according to the drawing, which looks quite nice. And I think I might actually do that. I'm just wondering if I can do it there, set up like that. If we turn this to 45 degrees. of a millimeter that'll do so let's slip this one out turn the jaws back around and I'm going to do the other one the same so that looks pretty good to me give that a deep burr excellent There we go. It's both of them finished up nice. We've got a bit of shape in that, which I'm really pleased with. Um, they all match. Probably isn't quite enough, but it's plenty. So that's what we've got. That standard and that standard all ready to go. We've got this piece pretty much finished. It still needs a row of holes in it and two holes to mount it down. This one's a bit bit longer as per the drawing. There's a pulley goes in between and a shaft you can cross between the two journals. So lid back on is next. So really need to sort out my milling machine issues with this rotary table in that I don't have an actual angle plate to set it up on yet. Something that needs to be done. Hasn't been done yet, uh, but we're going to live with it and use the drill press for this one. Everything's set up nice, it's nice and firm here. decided to use 6B8 bolts, so ten bolts is thirty-six degrees. 
got the bolts on the PCD so that's pretty cool uh, two ways we can go from here we can set the other part of the pump up in there and put the 10 holes in but first we want to mark one because these need to line up um, there's a pipe goes through between these so that's fairly important so I'm going to mark one first. So anyway, moving right along. I've got this done and it was a bit of messing around because I've ended up plugging this here and then cleaning it out on the inside because this hole was much too close to this this diameter and probably this should have gone around that way a bit and this hole should have been much much smaller in the middle but we got it now and it's done these aren't exactly right this way but they're not far out and they'll do and no one will ever notice so got these on here these these bolts are all going to need to be shortened up at some point it's another job which we look forward to. Anyway, these holes are all on and they look pretty good. So that's the 10 holes around there. They don't quite line up and if we put this on here you'll see that they're out of fraction. But not going to worry anyone I don't think. Uh, it's not kicking in my OCD and there were things on this pump build that were. So that, that's cool. Now, we need a base, and this is what I had drawn up. It's got four holes in it, and an oil trench, or whatever you want to call it, a bit of clearance for the pulley, around it like that. I've got a bit of aluminium, and it wants to be about that length. We could sit this one on here nicely, and this one here. Could be a little bit wider, a uh, bigger dive, bigger footprint, I think. So I'm going to clean up both ends of this and leave it this width, I think. And probably put it in the four jaw and machine. I think it wants that much off it, but it wants a bit off it. It wants to look good. It wants could do with a quarter of an inch off it at least of six seven millimeters off the top probably just going to get ahead and put this in the four drawer and clean this up and, and do that first and then we'll start thinking about marking out and putting some grooves and things in the top so it looks nice so if all my maths is right this should be right on the other side now i haven't really shown much of this because there's a bit of constant a bit of concentration required and also you can't actually see anything on this side but i've hollowed this out with a five millimeter ball end mill um, in a h pattern the same as the drawing and hopefully when we take this out we'll be able to see what's happened so there we go this is pretty much exactly right to fit that in there. Um, finish isn't particularly good. This one should be right for the other side. So it could probably be 0.1 of a millimetre deeper there. 
um, in here to be really nice and I might just do that I might go over it again I'll set it up again and we'll just make it that fraction deeper I think and set it up again again on the, ch on the chuck there like so and turn this into there plus a little bit more and I might just mess around again and take another cut with a mirror and this is most of how we're doing this you can see that going to clean that up again I think it needs another cut across it and we might have a bit of a look then over at the bench so getting ahead of myself a bit here but this is what I've got I've got a base there which has a recess machine in it to match those feet Aluminium is not really my metal of choice for anything. I had this piece, so that's what I've used. But it's pretty rotten, really. It's 60-61, it's and it's hard, and it comes up all your drills and taps, and it's hard to tap. Not a big fan, really. But I've got these lined up pretty good. Um... The impeller needs to look something like that, I guess. It needs a 5mm shaft through here. And it needs a pulley on it and a collar on the end. So, I guess next job, really. Is to take some time and make a shaft for it. So... Bit of be stainless. We'll machine that to five millimeters. It needs to mount on the impeller on one end, and this has got a set screw in it. Fairly uninspiring, but um, might thread it as well. I think screw it on and then put a set screw in it to stop it turning. I think that might be the best. If we just put a, a set screw in that, it's going to come loose, and I don't like that much. So. We'll make a shaft and we'll turn the end down and we'll put a thread on one end and we'll make a pulley for it. And then start thinking about an impeller. So, only piece of stainless I had in the place was 12mm. So I've machined this down to what 5mm, which is what I ran the, the pump housing for. It's right to there because I couldn't get this cutter right in against the yeah so this this little bit's a little bit bigger on the end so i've marked that and we're about 01 over there so i might just give it another bit more of a rub and we're under there no we're not we're just spot on there exactly the same there and pretty close there so i'm going to cut this now um just cut it to length roughly and machine each end in a collet i think which will be the, the best way to do this so we'll take it out i'll go and cut this and i'll put the collet chuck on and we'll machine the ends i'm going to go ahead now and shorten all these bolts up
if we keep these captive um, with the nut and the head, the hex head the same size, they're easy to grip. A round corner on this makes them easy to start and makes it so that there's no burrs left on them and makes them fairly easy to get them all the same. So there's only a tiny little bolt. A set of lantern chucks would be really nice to do this, but it hasn't happened yet. And it's probably just as easy to do them in two operations. So set the, set the nut to the right length, trim them all, and then come back and clean the ends of them up after you wind them in a bit. So we've got a shaft. Which is down to five millimeter with a four M4 thread on the end of it. We need to make an impeller which I'm going to start with a disc of, of this brass, which is what I've got to about the right size. I've got a piece of bronze, but it's kind of, it's like 75 mil diameter, like we've seen before. And I don't really want to carve it up to make an impeller. So this will do, I think. It's a bit long to go in the, it's too big to go through the chuck. So I'm going to part a piece off. If we send a drill it, and I reckon about that long. piece aside and we've got a nice piece of stock here to make an impeller out of. Piece of aluminium stuck on that tip which really annoys me. Aluminium's awful stuff. I should have made the base out of out of brass to be honest. And all I'm going to do here is drill and tap this, turn it somewhere down the sides and part it off, screw it on the other mandrel with a bit of decent Loctite and then we can move to a collet to machine it properly. So we put some Loctite on that and put this in the chuck and this in the chuck and we're going to screw this home nice and tight and nice and square like that. take him out and let that cure for a bit so that's the start of the impeller we need a pulley a little collar for the back so that's next um, we might get on and make a, a pulley of some sort this brass would probably do for it but it looks a bit naff so I might I might try and find a bit of steel to make that out of I think that'll be next So, getting ahead of ourselves again, this is what I've got. I've given this a little bit of a, a taper on here, and because it's coming under here, I've built this up with JB Weld, which will be nice, I think, with a coat of paint on it. I've got these running pretty nice. Um, these bearings are pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with them, actually. They're better than I'd hoped. And I've gone ahead and I've made 
a pulley. Alright, so if we put all this together, try not to touch the wet JB world, like so. We've got the impeller in there, we've got that on there, we still need a collar on this end. We can put that on there. Haven't got a lot of inflow there, but if we put a collar on it, it'll be just perfect. So, all we need some veins and some cavity in the front of the impeller, and we're sort of done on a couple of probably a couple of fittings but it's starting to look pretty good I think um, fairly impressed with that so if we take that apart this isn't coming off here ever again um, now it's lined up like that and the bolts are tight that's where it's staying um, don't care Put a coat of paint over the top of the lot of it and as far as I can see that's where it's going to be for the rest of its life. M4 screw in there, nice and big rather than small. This is 332 which is two and a half millimeters, hardly big enough to do any good. So I've learnt from experience that a bigger grub screw or a bigger cap screw, set screw to, to hold things in place is probably a good thing rather than the smaller one. So there we go. This is gonna need to be bored out in the center and it's gonna need three, basically three veins chopped in there like that. I think is probably the answer there. So, veins are next. We better set this up in the mill and do something about that. So, difficult setup this and I've messed around with it for a bit, but what I've done is just use the collet block here uh, and the side and face cutter a fairly sharp one and a couple of cuts at a time to get this down to the shape that I really want it. This is another one of those awesome sections on the on the drawing that or part on the drawing that has absolutely no information about it. And to be honest it was just a filed up casting I believe probably originally but we'll make it fairly uniform and balanced could go quite a bit thinner than this I think down a bit. I think it could go another one though. It's starting to look pretty good. I think we're going to leave that. I don't think it wants to be much narrower than that. Um, we have a look. That's what we've got. I'm going to cut the center out of this and give it a clean up. A bit of a deburr. And we might bore the sender out of this and see what it looks like then.
So next job's this little collar. Pretty straightforward. Remember to take that off there before we part it off. That's him. Needs a set screw in it. We might just clean him up on the other side first. We turn this round. So that's what we've got. I think that'll do. A bit more curve in here, a bit more gap in the cavity here will, wouldn't have hurt, but it's not bad, I think. I think it'll work fine. Um, I've got a brass pulley that I made up, quick and easy. And we've made up a collar there. And we can put some holes in, we can put some screws in the, in the lid. Still need to make a gasket and put some paint on it. Um, give it a bit of a clean up. And we'll see how enthusiastic we are about that by the end of this video. But I'm going to probably edit this up now and say thanks for watching. Um, thanks for all your help if you're watching this on Patreon. If you're watching on YouTube, um... You probably noticed that this has jumped a bit, um, about 15 parts. So I've put these up a bit quicker on YouTube, I think, and um, just this little build. Not sure about that yet, but if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe, all that sort of stuff. Thanks for your patience and time and all that. Thanks for watching, and uh, more soon, guys and girls. Be kind to each other.